Hello everybody, my name is Kirk. Uh, welcome to my Let's Play of Kerbal Space Program. I am uh, currently running the latest version, 18.2, and I thought I'd start out the new year by doing uh, something cool and interesting uh, that I've been uh, following for uh, uh, for a few months now. Um, I uh, really enjoy this game, I hope you do too. If you don't know what it is, I'm not really sure how you found this video, but uh, let's get straight to it. Uh, now the purpose of my uh, of my little endeavor here is to uh, name this one Kirk Tube. I think that's fitting. I might change it, but yeah. Uh, is to send a uh, space probe to every body in the Kerbin system, um, map it. I'm going to be using the ISA MapSat mod for this, since uh, vanilla doesn't come with such uh, capabilities. Uh, now, we're going to start off with just a quick uh, video on how to how I get into orbit. It may serve as a tutorial for, for others, or for some, or as boring filler for others. But uh, here's the idea that I have. I don't have anything prepared, so I'm going to do this sort of on the fly here. Uh, let's start with a uh, probe uh, module here. Now basically what I have in mind is uh, creating a fuel station up in orbit because I don't I don't want this to be just a quick orbit to see if I can because I can do it I've done it lots of times before. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna throw up a uh, space station core and I'm gonna put it in orbit and hopefully we'll be able to use that as a fueling station for uh, for our other. Uh, interplanetary endeavors. Um, now, what I want to do is just, I'm, I'm not going to stick a, I'm not going to stick a uh, docking core, uh, docking node directly beneath this because this needs power and uh, if I put a bunch of batteries around, around it, uh, there won't be much room for power source. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a um, mini struts, these girders, uh, to you know just give it a little bit of structure. Now, since I said this needs power, I'm going to add some batteries to it. And these won't last forever, and we'll, we'll be adding some uh, some solar panels because at the distance that Kerbin is from uh, from the sun, those will those will work just fine. I don't want a lot of these because this is going to be a fair sized space station. Um, so I'm thinking 12 ought to do it. So that's 6. And 8. And 12. Right now that looks that looks all right I guess. Uh, I don't like my my builds to be ugly, so I, I guess that looks like it's got purpose at least. It's not pretty. Uh, now let's put these panels on here as well. Oop, that's crooked. A bit OCD about symmetry. Okay, so these will extend out and give us the power that we need to, to run the core. Now obviously uh, this will need to maneuver in space as well so uh, let's put in some RCS fuel. I'm gonna put that one there just to sort of separate the core a little bit more from the uh, uh, sorry the, um, the docking node a little bit more from the from the strut there. I'm also gonna use these mono Propellant tanks. I put four of them right there. Now, also just to make sure that we can see what's going on, I think also want to add some lights. 
I'm not sure where the lights are. What's the difference between these? I'm guessing they just look different. So let's have four of those on there. Well, obviously, um, as you know, best practice for space station alignment right now is to have them pointing uh, at either one of the poles. So in order to make sure that it stays aligned once we've aligned it, you know, put an SAS module right on the core there. And I think that that's about it. Oh, I forgot. I forgot the uh, RCS thrusters. Now, I've seen some people using three of these. I find it a little bit more efficient to use four because that way you can thrust in every direction uh, without having to use, you know, with the thrust pointed in the direction that you, that you want the thing to go. Uh, if you use three, uh, you might have tr trouble doing that because it, it, it'll use a lot more fuel, even though three is obviously less weight, but uh, you, you use m more fuel in the, in the long run just because you're, uh, you, you skimped on, on one of these thrusters. So we're going to need to get this thing into orbit. Now, I'm thinking this isn't very heavy, so I'm not going to go too much overboard with the... Uh, Oops, the decoupler. I'm not going to go too much overboard with the uh, launch vehicle here. I think that ought to do it. And I'm going to stick a mainsail at the bottom of this, but as you know, the mainsail engine will actually overheat if you stick it directly into one of these uh, yellow, t uh, sorry, orange tanks. So I'm going to add an extra tank. And it won't overheat if the tank is white. Which is kind of weird, I guess. Uh, they wanted to add a little bit of difficulty in using this large uh, fuel container, but it's it's kind of easily bypassed with uh, this neat little trick here. And you can even use the small one, which doesn't even matter for fuel. It's like it's tiny compared to what this thing will, uh, will guzzle down. So uh, so yeah, that's a that's a Pretty handy trick I learned on the YouTubes. Um, you know, this isn't going to get into orbit on its own, so we're going to need some solid rocket boosters. Now I'm going to go crazy with these. Where's the structural? Yeah, there we go. I'm going to use eight of them. Now the thing with solid rocket boosters is that when they separate, obviously in order for them to move sideways, they have to apply some sort of force. Uh, what that does actually is, in turn, it applies a force to the fuel tank. And if these aren't perfectly uh, tangent to the fuel tank, uh, you're actually going to get torque. And this thing's going to spin around like a top. If you're not prepared for that on separation, you, you do actually risk losing control of the of the spaceship. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, to get around that. But uh, yeah, these don't look like they're uh, they're aligned correctly. So I think uh, that's probably going to have to deal with. Now let's put some SRVs on here. Oops. Okay. They look like they're on there. Let's zoom out a little bit. Let's put her down. Okay, so now I don't want this to just stand there on the on the launch pad because it might topple over. Now there's no wind modeled in Kerbal Space Program, but I found that things, even uh, using symmetry, aren't perfectly balanced, so it might tip over. So uh, what we do is we use these crane type things and uh, that will keep it stable while it's standing still. Now I want all of these firing at the 
the same time as these let go. I want this mainsail engine firing at the same time as these. So I think we're good to go. And we're going to call this one fuel, whoops, foil, uh, fuel station, station, station one. Uh, because I'm planning on actually having um, other fuel stations around the larger bodies, like Jewel, for instance. Might have one around Duna, uh, just so we can go visit Ike. Maybe we'll have a colony on Duna. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So I, I think this thing's ready to launch. So off to the launch pad. Okay, so as you can see, it's not tiny. Now, the way that I like to launch this is, or any rocket in general, is to turn on the SAS from the get-go. So we're always pointing up. And as for thrust, I'm going to put the mainsail up at around 50% thrust. That way, it's just supporting its own weight. Maybe the weight of the, um, of the payload here. But the majority of the work for the first uh, part of the ascent is going to be done by these uh, solid rocket boosters. So they're going to get us off the launch pad and uh, hopefully high enough uh, in the atmosphere that we'll, uh, we'll be able to uh, start a gravity turn. So without further ado, let's uh, do a countdown. 3, 2, 1, and blast off. At a decent speed here. And getting a bit of altitude. We have some spin off the launch pad because those cranes weren't perfectly perpendicular to the um, SRBs, so that gives us a little bit of spin. For the same reason, the SRBs will uh, spin my rocket even more once, uh, once I separate them, but that, that's okay. I can, uh, I can keep track. I, uh, Pretty sure uh, the equatorial plane is around this direction, so uh, well, we'll see how it goes. Uh, coming up on separation, uh, pretty quick here. These are about to run out of fuel pretty soon, and separation. I see. Yeah, it put us into a bit of a spin. That's okay. Yes, yes, appears to have fixed that. Now we want to start a gravity turn right about now. And I'm going to put it at 45 degrees and stop right there. Let's see how this map's looking. Still at half thrust, so I'm going to put that right there. And you can see uh, the power of this mainsail. Pretty ridiculous. Now I just want the Apple apps to be up in space and then we can correct this angle that we've got here. Okay, should do it. Now, I, uh, I stopped thrusting when we're above 70, uh, because the 70 is about the edge of space. So I'm going to want to start burning horizontally. Uh, but also correct the angle of my uh, orbit, and as soon as we are in space, so stop right there, and RCS off, just to make sure we uh, save on that RCS fuel, we, we've got a bunch, and we have a uh, good bit of fuel left, so I'm, uh, I'm optimistic about this orbit, let's make sure that we correct that orbital inclination as well. I'm going to start burning around, uh, what is wrong with this thing, around 40 seconds. Okay. And also, in order to get a circular orbit without having to do multiple passes, what I, uh, what I like to do is just make sure that my apple apps stays around about 40 seconds, and I think the 
put a little inclination it has been corrected there, so just make sure that this is right on the horizon there. At 90 degrees. And it stopped burning. I need a little bit more thrust. I don't pass the upper wipes now. There we go. It's uh, stabilized. Okay. Oh, this isn't going very well. Okay. Running up a little bit just to uh, gain a little bit more altitude because uh, I'm not liking the uh, 79 there. I'd, I'd prefer something uh, above 100 kilometers. We'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. As you can see, I'm getting farther away from my apolapse. Just want to make sure I get that up to 40 ish. Okay. How's this looking? It's not too bad. I'm not sure uh, I got enough fuel, but uh, it should be okay. Sorry. Now I realize leaving the RCS on and the SAS on wastes uh, RCS fuel, but uh, I think we got enough of that. I think we have that base covered pretty well. Okay. Almost in orbit. Uh, not a whole lot of fuel left, but I, I don't think we'll, uh, we'll need much more than this. As you can see, I don't need a lot of thrust to uh, push my apolapse forward. Now you may think there's no periaps for me to raise right now, uh, but it's actually inside the planet. So every time I burn close to that blabs, I'm actually oh there is a periaps. Uh, even if there wasn't, I'm, I'm still actually raising it because of the fact that uh, I'm burning at the most efficient time, just right at apolapses. But since uh, thrust doesn't happen in real time, uh, or rather the speed the velocity differential doesn't happen in real time uh, or instantaneously. Uh, I'd, I'd like to burn a little bit before apolapse. I'm going to raise this so that we're at least in space. Uh, like I said before, not a lot of thrust needed. So 74 by 84. I'm liking this. I think I'm going to park this on this kind of an orbit. As you can see, we were able to correct that angle as well. We're uh, basically a tutorial. Uh, and I just want to correct the altitude on the uh, on the other side there. Almost out of RCS fuel. Got a, we're almost halfway through our RCS fuel. I'm going to make sure that uh, we don't waste that because we still need it in order to uh, align with the poles so that we're... Uh, we're able to uh, dock to uh, to this space station core as efficiently as possible, but uh, I, I'm liking this. It's it's looking good. It's looking really good. As you can see, we're right above the atmosphere, just about 13 kilometers from uh, from the uh, atmosphere. Now, I just want to get this thing in orbit. And then later we can we can correct this order. We may we're, we'll be able to raise it or lower it as needed. I think uh, I'm gonna I might want to raise it a little bit uh, later. But for now, this is looking uh, mighty good because we won't need a whole lot of fuel to bring our fuel up here. So the lower the orbit, the more efficient it is. Uh, I mostly like to keep it above 100 kilometers so you can uh, time accelerate to to make things go on a little bit quicker. But this is this is alright as well. Okay, we're aligned with the prograde marker, and 
burn. Okay, 83 by 84. That's looking pretty good. So there you go. Uh, we got into directly into a circular orbit without having to do mul multiple passes. In fact, we, we only went about 90 degrees um, between uh, the Kerbal Space Center and uh, where we are now. So we are now able to separate this stage. And align with the poles. Now this is going to be in perpetual orbit. Uh, hopefully it won't bump into us later, but uh, given the distances involved in, in space, I don't think that's going to be an issue. It, it might have some close passes, but it'd have to be a pretty big space station in order for, for this to, to become a problem. So, And like I said, eventually we'll, we'll want to raise the orbit of, of this station. Now, like I said, we want to align with the poles here. And I just want to stabilize the, uh, the movement here. And as you can see, since we uh, separated from, uh, from that stage, we become a lot more maneuverable. Okay, and we're pointing north, Let's spin around a little bit so it looks better. Oh. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And there you have it. Now all that's left to do is extend our solar panels. And there you go, we have a robotic space station core up in orbit uh, in a stable, circular, low orbit. Easy to get to, and uh, we'll be doing that in the next episode. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll be attaching at least one orange fuel tank to this, and uh, that way we'll, uh, we'll also be able, able to cover docking. Uh, but like I said, mainly this is going to be used as a fueling uh, station for future missions. We'll have four uh, uh, fuel tanks, four orange fuel tanks docked onto these side ports here. Uh, they may also include uh, extra RCS fuel for maneuvering. Uh, I might decide to add some sort of habitat uh, module on this end and, uh, and then have another, another of these uh, nodes the end of that for refueling of other space uh, spaceships but uh, yeah there you have it mission accomplished so we're uh, we're good to go uh, all that's left to do is rename this ship fuel station one and this is now a space station and uh, that's about it for this episode let me know what you think in the comments below uh, like it if you like it, and uh, if you uh, if you want to stay in, uh, stay in touch, and uh, make sure that you uh, you're notified as soon as uh, I have new uh, content on. Uh, make sure to also subscribe. Once again, this was Kirk, and uh, I'm uh, I'm signing off. <laughs>